Hi, I'm Eric Olson, KSMQ Public Television with an On Cue Your Money segment. Thank you for joining us. Well, it is going to be a few months probably before we see the impact of some really volatile wholesale natural gas prices. But it's certain that some of those costs are going to be passed along to consumers. You may see a jump. You'll probably see a jump in your natural gas bill coming up. In Minnesota, the Public Utilities Commission launched a formal investigation into the sudden spikes in those natural gas wholesale prices. These increases forced utilities to pay historically high amounts to purchase more supplies of natural gas. Now, our guest says some gas utilities have spent as much as 50, 50 times the price that they usually pay uh, for natural gas. Adi Rayade is the Deputy Commissioner for Energy Resources at the Minnesota Department of Commerce, and he joins us now from his office. You're in St. Paul, sir? Yes. Thank All you, right. Eric. Hey, thank you, very, thank you very much for joining us. Well, natural gas was in the news about a month ago when Texas had all their deep freeze and so on. Is that that deep freeze, is that what's causing all this, the spiking in the gas prices? Uh, so uh, there, is a, uh, there is a formal investigation going on um, uh, initiated by the Public Utilities Commission and supported by the Department of Commerce. Um, our initial understanding is that there were both supply and demand issues uh, that led to this. So uh, there was a polar vortex in much of um, the middle of the country, uh, which led to an unusually high demand. Uh, there were also some supply pressures. Um, some of the natural gas production assets uh, in Texas uh, and uh, in some other states, Oklahoma perhaps, were not weatherized, so there were supply pressures as well. And in my limited understanding of energy, it is very complex. The world you work in, how things are regulated, regardless of what fuel you're talking about, just how it gets into our homes is such a a roller coaster of rules and distances and so on that we might not even, I don't understand really how natural gas gets to us or who pays for it because my initial reaction would just be, well, I get this bill in the mail and it's mm -hmm. way higher. So now I'm going to be upset at the gas utility, my local utility. It's, it's complicated. Can you help unpack it for us a little bit just regarding natural gas? Uh, yeah, absolutely. So natural gas is just one of a number of resources that Minnesota uses to keep the lights on and, and keep us warm. Uh, it's certainly true, as you said in your opening comments, that some Minnesota utilities had to buy natural gas at more than 50 times higher um, than the price that they, they would uh, usually pay. Um, but our system of uh, energy is is reliable, and it's because of the regulatory structure that we that we have uh, in the state. Of course, natural gas uh, supply chain is complex, from producers uh, to uh, intermediaries to gas distribution utilities, which are the regulated entities in in the in the state. Right. So, um, um, the investigation. Uh, is going to look into things such as, you know, what percentage uh, for rate regulated utilities, right? This doesn't apply to uh, municipally owned gas utilities such as such as Austin. Uh, they're not regulated, but for the regulated utilities, the investigation will look into uh, things such as what percentage of the purchase was done ahead of time, what percentage of purchase uh, was done uh, on a variable basis, and um, uh, what uh, how, the, the, the higher than anticipated uh, demand, to what an extent that was responsible for uh, the variable purchase. Um, so it is, it is a complex uh, issue. So it may very well be more than just a supply and demand so people understand because you figure, well, if people are using more natural gas, it just stands to reason that it's going to 
might cost more, but this was just a huge increase. Yes, that's uh, that's 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 absolutely correct. And when there is a huge uh, increase in demand, a greater percentage um, of uh, the supply would come from 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 the variable prices, right? Um, so uh, this is as far as our investigation into the rate regulated utilities is concerned. We have a collaborative relationship with Minnesota Municipal Utilities Association. Uh, so through that relationship, although we don't regulate them or the commission doesn't regulate them because of our collaborative relationship, we are assessing the impact on member utilities and their customers. Uh, when these customers are likely to experience these impacts and we are evaluating options uh, that might exist through both public and private routes to help the situation for um, uh, both municipal and uh, rate regulated utility uh, gas customers. And we're speaking with Commissioner Ade Ranade of the uh, Energy Resources Division, where he's Deputy Commissioner uh, with at the Minnesota Department of Commerce. Uh, Commissioner, we and and nobody, there's no natural gas made in Minnesota. It all comes from elsewhere, right? Correct. Yeah. So there's costs there at the producer level so the local utilities are saying hey we're sort of you know we pass it along but we're not making excess money is that what part of your investigation is going to look at who's who's making the money on this uh, so so certainly part of our investigation um or the core of the investigation would be you know were the gas the rate regulated gas utilities prudent in their expenditure and um there are statutes and rules that uh, through which the commission would conduct this investigation there is a process for uh, passing those costs on on to the customers uh, through fuel clause so uh, we'll follow the appropriate laws and statutes uh, in uh, in line with uh, the guidance from the Public Utilities Commission. What is there any timeline established? How when do you think you might have some information? Uh, so Commerce's role is to is to protect uh, protect the consumers, um, and uh, in that uh, you know in that role um, we represent uh, consumer interests at the at the commission. So, um, you know, stay tuned for the for the timeline uh, of uh, of the investigation. Um, the fuel clause adjustments and true up of the cost for rate regulated utility customers um, uh, will happen in September uh, 2021 onwards. So I, I, I would say um, that's the timeline that that we're working against. Um, but for uh, municipal gas customers, uh, we are using our collaborative relationship with the Minnesota Municipal Utilities Association to essentially um, uh, it, it, trying to assess um, member by member what's the impact and how the customers are likely to experience it. Um, most importantly, for people who are struggling right now to pay their utility bills, uh, I would encourage them to apply for the energy assistance program. Uh, with the pandemic, more people than ever could benefit. Uh, you should apply now to find out how we can cover your bills. In light of the long cold spell in February, we doubled the energy assistance crisis benefits to $1,200 per household. So we strongly encourage people to apply now. And this is a state program, right? It's not federal or is it, it's federal, but administered by the state? Uh, yes, the, uh, correct. So it is a federally funded program administered by uh, the Department of Commerce. And do folks learn about that? I know you have, do you want them to call? There's the 800 number uh, that we'll have on the screen, 657-3710 mm -hmm. for more information or should they go to, right to a website? Uh, to learn about it? So they can uh, call that number uh, and there is more information on Commerce website. Uh, they can go to uh, Minnesota Commerce website and search for energy assistance. So they can use both means to learn more. So the key is, and key words would be energy assistance. Look for that. Correct. There are all kinds of things on Department of Commerce website. Oh. Yes. <laughs> um, so the, the, the shortest way would be to call that number. 
Okay, and we'll have that on the screen. 1-800-657-3710. And that's to find your local assistance provider. Uh, Commissioner, before we let you go, besides your work, there's also a federal, uh, or there might be a federal investigation also. I know uh, Senator Smith from Minnesota has talked about that. Can you, mm -hmm. I know it's not in your department specifically, but can you speak to that at all, what they're gonna be working on? Uh, so I, I can, I can speak from secondhand knowledge here. Uh, so, uh, so as you know, Senator Smith has, um, uh, yeah, uh, it, 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 she's trying to launch an investigation at the federal level. Also, uh, Federal Energy Regulatory Commission or FERC uh, that is in charge of um, the nation's uh, electrical grid uh, reliability issues has um, launched its own investigation. Uh, investigation. So Chairman Rich Gleek um, uh, has, has launched that uh, and, and FERC um, because they regulate um, interstate electrical transmission as well as fuel security issues, uh, they'll be really in the best position to um, uh, to um, um, uh, coordinate that that investigation. All right. Well, we'll be watching for that also. Uh, thank you very much. It was this was a very informative conversation, and uh, we'll uh, we'll keep that number on our website too, folks, so you can. Uh, uh, call back on it, look at it, refer to it, and call in for more information. Uh, Commissioner Ade Rabade, thank you so much for joining us here on KSMQ Public Television. Thank you, Eric. You bet. For now, I'm Eric Olson. Have a good day.